All right, so we got our fine 2004 Toyota Highlander here. And Alicia was coming home and she heard a noise. That's not good. Something is going on. Is it a seized caliper? Seized caliper pins, maybe? Let's get the wheel off and see what's going on. A little corrosion on those bad boys. Let's see. Ooh, she's hot. Oh man, is it ever. Okay, I can already see something. Let's see if you guys can see it. What I'm looking at here is right there. That rubber is open and I bet that pin is seized. So rather than buy a new bracket, I think we'll pull the brakes off. We'll pull the caliper bracket off. This stuff is really hot, so I'm gonna have to be careful. And then we'll see if we can get that pin loosened up and get it all cleaned up and put it back together and see how it goes. All right, I was wrong. It's not seized. It came right out. So we might be dealing with a seized brake caliper. Went against my other rule. I got a lot of rules that I go against. Eh, see what I did? Now I got the shim all wadded up. Let's see. Jeez, man. That's how today's going. That rubber got so hot. We better take that off of there to get it back together. See, what I should have done is loosen this bottom one before I took that one out. <laughs> Neither one of the pins are seized. Either the pads are seized and they're not moving like they're supposed to, or this caliper is seized up. Let's see. Pads are moving. Not great, but they're moving. So I think we're dealing with a seized caliper. Let's get a tool on here, maybe a C-clamp or our caliper compression tool and see if it'll compress it all. So yeah, it sure seems like we're dealing with a stuck caliper. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna ask Alex to press on the brake some. I'm gonna keep this piston from flying out i'm gonna keep the tool right here we'll have alex he's gonna reach in there and he's gonna smush up and down on the brake all right stop let's see if this will compress now without a bunch of force yeah it's stuck all right appreciate it alex thank you so we are dealing with the i mean i'm i know that i'm kind of pushing on it at an angle with this tool but it shouldn't take this much force going back in now first initial squish it doesn't like that so it looks like yeah we're dealing with a seized brake caliper unfortunately we also got some rust issues back here i don't think that this is going to be her main vehicle much longer it's been a great vehicle this highlander has been awesome it's about due for a timing belt service again it's got 300,000 michigan miles on it so i can't complain when something like this happens Ooh, boy, that sounds like that wheel bearing's wasted too. I happen to have a wheel bearing for this thing. This job just got a lot deeper. Let me go find that wheel bearing that I had I ordered for this a long time ago. And we'll get that out here. And I guess we start taking all this stuff apart because we need a wheel bearing also. So our pads aren't completely wasted. I mean, it was stuck a little bit. Still had some anti-seize on it there. Yeah, we better pull this apart. So we need a caliper. <laughs> and a wheel bearing. All right, let's see if we can get this caliper bracket loose before we make the same mistake we did with the caliper. Let's get this bottom one loose. And I found the replacement wheel bearing I've had around here for six years, we figured out. Or no, four, yeah, six years. Almost seven years. It's been on the shelf. I was praying that I didn't accidentally throw it away. It wouldn't have been an accident. I would have thrown it away because I got tired of looking at it, which would make perfect sense because every time I do something like that, I need it. It never fails. I can have something for 10 years and as soon as I throw it away, like, oh man, I could have used that. Every time. That's good and hot. Now, there are these holes in it. These holes right here are threaded. Run a bolt in to press this off. So I'll get some bolts together to run in here and see if we can work this off. I'll spray a little bit in these holes. I actually have some new croil. Croil? Croil? I'm not sure. But we'll try that and see if that helps us out any. So here we go. It's brand new. Got it for Christmas. Cano Aero Croil. The oil that creeps. Industrial side. Let's get a shot in there it smells kind of like furniture polish just try and get a little bit in behind there hopefully it'll help us separate these two pieces i hate to waste this stuff i think we're actually going to do a, a test with it we're going to get some really rusted stuff and spray it with that versus like wd-40 and liquid wrench and see how much force it takes to remove it if that's something you're interested in seeing let us know in the comments so hopefully you guys can see this we've got these two bolts run in here to try and drive this rotor off coils in behind there soaking Oh yeah, it's working. There we go. So I don't know if that was the croil helping us out. Look, at it. it's all soaked back there. That might be the best thing I've ever seen. That's pretty awesome. It's completely wet. I just sprayed in through the rotor holes here, sprayed in these holes. 
luckily toyota gave us these handy holes to be able to remove our wheel bearing now i wonder i don't know how much good it would do but i kind of feel like i want to soak this with some of that croil and uh, see how easy this wheel bearing comes off how old is it so 2004 so you got 16 years plus the two so this has been on it's no doubt it's the original one because we've owned it for a long time and i've never replaced it so it's at least 16 years of michigan winters so let's do this we're gonna i'm gonna give it a shot i know no, no, not much of this is going to creep in there, but let's just try. I don't want to waste this. It's that awesome. People always have their preferences about Liquid Ranch, WD-40, stuff like that, but let's just see. Let's give it a few minutes and we'll see if it creeps in there and, and how much easier this is to get off. We soaked it with the croil. Now I'm going to start smashing it with a hammer. We're going to see. I undid the ABS clip in the backside. No, there's no parking brake. All that stuff rotted apart a couple years ago along with the backing plate, so I don't want to hear a bunch of rigmarole in the comments about things that are missing i know they're missing it's not a different person's vehicle this is our vehicle and i will zip tie it together as long as i want to we're not replacing the other one so we can't count how many smacks with a hammer it takes with the croil versus without it but i have a pretty good idea that this is not going to come off easy if it does i'm going to credit the lack of effort to the croil so let's see okay well i mean the backing plate and everything came off <laughs> So I can't uh, give the Croil the credit for that one because the whole thing just fell off. But we can uh, we can do something else. We'll, we'll get the bearing out of the backing plate and we'll we'll start putting it back together. All right. So I opted to use my knee to steady it. There we go. That's what it took. There's the junk bearing. Now I'm gonna have to clean this thing up right here where I hit it with the air hammer because it won't set flush if I don't clean that up. So let me clean that up. And we'll get her put back together. That'd be something after all that, that like this was the wrong wheel bearing or something. Did I speak too soon? Oh my gosh, I think I did. This is for the other side, yeah. Dang it, it's for the other side. Cause if we do that, then the holes are lined up incorrectly. The wide holes go at the top. This wheel bearing's for the other side. Dang it, and there's no, yeah, you can see the holes there. Oh, mer, mer, son of God. Dang it. Well. I guess that means that's pretty well it for today. Why would they do that? Man, I love Toyota. And sometimes I run into stuff like this, like why? Why would you make two different spindles, two different wheel bearings? It's definitely for the other side though. I saved it all these years and I go to use it. I get it out of the box it was in the whole time and it's for the other side. And I'm all for like making some stuff work, but there's no, there's no making this work. Like this is where, here's what we're dealing with. The hole here for the ABS sensor, the wide holes at the top, we put it in, wide holes at the top, and this hole for the ABS sensor, it's in the front and it needs to be in the back and unless yeah no can't do that wah, wah. the funny part of this is i'll probably hang on to this for as long as we have this thing and never need it oh this is so disappointing i was so excited to finally use this bearing it's just been taking up space and it's not even the right one why would they do that that's so lame so we're back and we have the correct wheel bearing now so we've got to put our backing plate on and we'll line this up with the hole slide this in here let's get some of these going here we're already in better shape than we were yesterday this wheel bearing is uh much better shape than the other one so let's start with this one let's get our impact and i'm going to turn it on low to start with we'll turn this down to one we're going to really wrench them down but to start with we just want i just want to run these in if you guys have any interest in a review on this 18 volt brushless let us know in the comments we'd be happy to put it through some more work so far it's been awesome i have a pretty good air impact that's been fantastic but not listening to the compressor run has been awesome so let's turn it up now let's go to three this will be maximum torque here there's that one now let's hang our rotor on here okay it's not hitting the backing plate anywhere 14 14 it is. Bottom one has a rubber, top one does not. We'll set this aside. Let's get our new bracket on here. Those are both tight. We got some brake hardware. These are brand new. This should work out nicely. All right, there's our hardware. I noticed this one has that thing on it, so should be good. We'll put a little bit of anti-seize on these pads, and then we'll put the pads on. We'll get the caliper on, and then we'll bleed it out a little bit. Now, we get parts delivered, so we were able to leave the caliper on until the new caliper showed up and zip that bolt out, zip this one together, 
we lost very little fluid. So once we do get it on, we'll we'll crack that bleeder open and, and bleed it out. And then we should be in pretty good shape. This is a brand new container of anti seize so there's quite a bit going on here. Man, once you get this stuff on your hands, it's a nightmare. Okay. We'll let it drip for a minute, get some fluid moving. All right, here we go. We'll crack her open. We should get some drips. I'll go open the master cylinder just to let it flow a little more free, I guess. A little more volume, maybe with the master cylinder cap off. We've got our hose run into our drain pan, if you can see it. We're gonna crack this bleeder open like that, and we're just gonna let it gravity bleed for a few minutes. And then maybe one, you, there's a few different ways to do this. You could you could have a clean hose and you could stick this into a bottle of brake fluid and pump the brakes. Vacuum bleeder, which I have. But really the easiest method is just get a cup of coffee or make a cup of coffee and let this thing do its job. The air will come out first and then when you have solid fluid, it's done. So we'll just leave it here, let it start dripping. All right, so this is what I was talking about. There you go, you've got some drips, just let it drip. You can have somebody double check it. All right, so we've let it bleed a while. Now we'll go ahead and close this bleeder off. We'll pull our hose. You don't have to use a hose, it just saves the mess. Yeah. So on some lug nuts, you'll find a shoulder like this. Typically with these, I'll run a couple on across from each other here. You gotta make sure that they go through the wheel before you start to tighten them down. There you go. Much better shape now. So we'll take it for a drive. All right, we're going to go out here for a test drive of the Highlander, and we'll see how it does. Sounds better already. Okay, here we go. Sounds better already. Heck yeah. So we'll just go up here and we'll turn around. Alicia can have her car back. She'll be happy. She doesn't like driving anything except trucks and SUVs. But she doesn't like my Ford F-250 diesel. Brakes feel good. Wheel bearing noise is gone, which I didn't really notice before. Sweet. I think we're in pretty good shape. So hey, if you like this video, it was mildly entertaining, let us know. Leave a comment. I was just joking around earlier about the rigmarole. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think, where we could improve what would make it more entertaining. So yeah, we put out two videos a week. So if you like our videos, subscribe, click the bell, let us know. Thanks for watching.